Welcome to the Jade and Stitches Show. I thought it was time to go outside and get comfortable with the new autumn weather that's coming in. So we've had a lot of requests to make a shawl, something that's sort of flexible, you can wrap up in it, something that's of a triangular nature. And the really nifty thing about these shawls is that you can wear them in a lot of different ways. So you can wrap them around your neck like this, and wear them all cozy up underneath your chin, especially if you've got on a blazer or maybe you're wearing a, a coat, something light to be outside in. You can also just treat them like a shawl. Put the larger part around your shoulders and dangle the longer bits over your arms. You can make this really, really big and you can even wear a belt with it. <laughs> you can tie this in a knot, you can get a really pretty brooch and just clasp it so that your arms are free. There's a lot of different ways to wear a triangular shawl uh, or scarf. I guess you could call this a scarf. And I thought we'd make this one today on the show. This is a really neat pattern. The cool bit to this pattern is that it's a repeating pattern, but as you repeat the pattern, it automatically becomes a triangle. It's really cool. And it's a heavy treble crochet pattern. So if you haven't gotten comfortable with the treble crochet, make sure you check out the tutorial I did on the treble crochet stitch last week. And here's the little link, you can click on that. I'll also put it in the description box below this video. And make sure you head over there and check out the treble crochet, get comfortable with it, because that's a lot of what you're gonna be doing as you make this shawl with me today. You can make this shawl as big as you want. You can make it as small as you want. You can make it with fine, fine fingering weight yarn and a small little hook and make a kerchief. You can make a shawl for a Blythe doll or an American doll. You can make them for human beings that are really, really big and human beings that are really, really small. <laughs> this is a very flexible pattern. So that is what we're going to do on the show today. And while you guys are grabbing your hooks and yarn, I'm going to go for a walk. All right, I want to start by talking about yarn. The yarn I use to make this shawl is this unnamed thin uh, acrylic wool blend that I got from a friend. So I had four balls. I had two in white and I had two in this soft uh, rosy pink color. And I know from experience that this yarn is about a size three because it's not so tightly spun that it would be like a size two. So it's about a size three. It makes sort of a soft um, loopy stitch when I work with it. So you want a thinner yarn, not a worsted weight, something just under a worsted weight. So a size three yarn, not a size four. Um, if you're making this uh, for yourself and if you're going to use um, the size hook that I did. I also have this stuff. Uh, my mother-in-law gave me this. It's a ball of prism by Mary Maxim and it's a size three. I took a look at the sort of the cover of it and it's a size three yarn and in some places it's really skinny and in other places it's it's really thick um, and it sort of unspins and I, I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm a big fan of variegated yarn and of course I love rainbow colors um, and this I think uh, would make a beautiful sort of shawl because it would change colors all the way through. Now you can make your solid colors or you can stripe it like I did. I striped mine um, simply because I didn't know when I started how much yarn I was going to need and I wasn't really sure how big I was going to make it. So I like the striping effect. I also think it would be cool to make one in a solid color or a variegated color. I do know now that you probably need about 500 grams of a size 3 yarn. So you want 500 grams of a size 3 yarn. That should be just enough um, and you should probably have a little bit left over. Obviously I have a ball left. Um, but I did use some of it. So just to err on the side of caution, in case you want to make yours bigger, you want 500 grams. I used a five, size five uh, crochet hook. So 5.0 millimeter crochet hook for my 
um, shawl. You can go a little bigger or a little smaller if you like, um, but I recommend sort of this size or maybe one size larger, like a 5.5 millimeter, because you want to have that lacy open work look happening as you use your treble crochet stitch. So a five and a half or a five millimeter hook is what you want to use with that sort of slightly smaller than normal yarn, the size three yarn. Uh, you need a pair of scissors and a, um, a yarn needle. This is just to weave in any of those little scrap ends that you get and that's really all you need. So once you've got that stuff, let's get started. All right, we start at the point. So the bottom, the very, very bottom. This little white thing is the border. We'll get to that afterwards. But we start at the point, which is the very bottom corner. And we begin with a slip knot. So make yourself a slip knot that's not too tight and not too loose. Make sure it moves around on your hook. And we're going to begin by chaining five. One, two, three, four, five. There is your chain five. We're going to begin by working into that first chain we made and you're going to treble crochet into that chain. So remember treble crochet is you wrap twice, put your hook through that first loop, wrap and pull up a loop so that you've got four loops on your hook, wrap and go through the first two, wrap and go through the second two, Wrap and go through the last two. Remember, I have a treble crochet um, stitch basics tutorial and I will link that in the description box down below. You can check that out if you need the help. You've got what is now officially two treble crochets. So I know a chain five seems a little tall for a treble crochet and it is, but because we're working in this sort of triangular shape, we want that chain five um, at the beginning of each row to kind of help give um, your triangular shawl a little more give, literally, along the edges. You want it to be able to have a little stretch, so that extra chain is what's going to give it a little extra stretch. So the chain five at the beginning of each row counts as a treble crochet. Now we're going to chain two. One, two. And we're going to work two more treble crochets into that same first chain. So wrap twice. Pull up a loop in that chain, wrap through the first two, wrap through the second two, wrap through the last two. And one more. Pull up a loop, wrap through the first two, wrap through the second two, wrap through the last two. And that is the first part of our shawl. So there's your bottom corner. All done, just like that. All right, let's move on to row two. So to begin, we want to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Flip your work. Because we're working back and forth now. We want to go back and forth, kind of like the pendulum on a clock. So you chain five and flip your work for every single row. And the first motif is going to be exactly the same as the first motif we made to begin our shawl. And we're going to work the whole thing into this first stitch. So if I flip it up on its edge, you can see the top of that last treble crochet. It's this one right here. And we're going to work everything into that. So this chain five counts as a treble crochet. We're going to treble crochet into that stitch. One, two, three. We're going to chain two, because that's the middle of this little motif. And then we're going to finish it off with two more treble crochets into that same stitch. There's one. And two. Okay, this is what it should look like. This is the bottom of your shawl. And this motif is echoed uh, at the beginning of row two. So you see there's two treble crochets, chain two, two treble crochets. That's what I'm going to call the fan motif for the purpose of this treble crochet shawl because there's actually two motifs that we work throughout this entire pattern. And this is what the second one looks like. 
in between each motif, you're going to chain one, just as a little separator, and that chaining one in between each motif is also going to give your, uh, your shawl a little bit of stretch. So you always want to make sure when you finish a motif, chain one, and then we're going to identify that chain two space from the motif of the beginning, so this little spot right here, and we're going to work a treble bobble, <laughs> a treble bobble into it. Now this bobble is a bit different than a lot of bobbles. It's only going to be made up of two treble crochet stitches as opposed to three or four. But for the purpose of this pattern, I'm going to call it a treble bobble. And that's how you're going to differentiate this fan motif from the bobble motif. And we're only going to work two throughout the entire pattern. And this is what a treble bobble <laughs> looks like. So you wrap your yarn as though you were going to do a regular treble, so two wraps. Put your hook through that whole two sort of chain space and pull up a loop. So you'll have four loops on your hook, just like that. Wrap, go through the first set of two. Wrap, go through the second set of two. Now leave those last two on your hook and pretend that it's only one stitch for now, but just sort of ignore it. Now we're going to treble into the same open space again. So you wrap twice as though you were going to do a regular treble. Throw your hook through there, grab your yarn. So now you've got one, two, three, plus if this was one stitch, it would be your regular four, but it should be five loops that you're looking at. So one, two, three, four, five. Wrap, go through the first set. Wrap, go through the second set. And now you've arrived, you've got the last three loops on your hook, you're going to treat that like it's a single set. So wrap and go through everything that's left, all three loops on your hook. And that is two treble stitches worked together. So the top has one stitch. As you can see, that's the top of this two treble little bobble. And like I say, a regular bobble has three, four, maybe even five stitches worked into it. But this is just two because we want it to lay flat. We want a little space in between them. But we only want one stitch across the top. We want it to count as a single stitch. And that's the other motif you're going to work. So we're going to finish row two now. We're going to chain one because you want a single chain between each of your motifs. And now we're going to skip to the edge. So this chain five that we began row one with counts as a treble. You're going to identify the top of it. So this is the top of the last treble stitch. And this is the top of the chain five. So you're going to work your last motif, a fan motif, just like this one, into that same little tiny chain right there. So wrap twice and treble crochet into that little top of that chain five. And treble crochet into the same place. And it might be a little hard to see, so Remember, you don't have to race. All right, that's the first two trebles. Now we need a chain two space. And there we go. And into that same space, so that same, now you'll notice it's opening up a little bit, so it's a bit easier to see. You want to finish your fan motif with two more treble crochets. There's one. And the last one. So, the treble fan motif for the purpose of this pattern looks something like this now, if I stretch it out. The treble fan motif is treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble. Treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble. That's your treble fan. Always put a single chain in between every single motif you're working. And the bobble is treble but only complete the first two sets, treble into the same place, and complete the first two sets, treat the last three loops on your hook as a single set. And that will give you a single stitch at the top. So that is the only two little motifs we're going to work. Let's move on to row three. You're going to chain five to begin. One, two, three, four, five. Flip your work, it's starting to look like a shawl. And into that first stitch, so the top of that last treble that you made on row two, 
this one right here, you're going to work a fan motif. So you begin and end every single row with a fan motif. So you start, you put a whole fan into that one stitch. Your chain five counts as a treble. So you work what's technically the second treble of that fan stitch. Put in two chains, work two more treble stitches into that same edge stitch because you work an entire fan into the same stitch. Okay, there we go. Chain one, because you want a chain one spacer in between every single motif, and the bobble goes into the chain two space of the previous row. So every chain two space you put in a bobble. So here's a chain two space, so we put in a bobble. Wrap twice, pick up a loop through that chain two space, work the first two sets of stitches, don't touch the last set, start your next treble, work it into the same space, work the first two sets, the second two sets, and then you should have three loops left on your hook at the end, wrap and go through all three. And that works all three of those trebles together. I should say all two of those trebles together. And that bobble goes into that chain two space. Now you're wondering, where do I put my next fan? Because you know you have to do a fan next. Well, that's easy. Pull your work apart. You might have to in the beginning, just to make sure you're working in the right place. And identify the bobble stitch from the previous row. This is why you want that single stitch that single pling on top there. You're going to work an entire fan into the top of that bobble. In fact, you're going to work an entire fan into the top of every bobble. And that is how this pattern works. Into the top of every bobble, you work a fan. Into the middle of every fan, so that chain two space, you work a bobble. <laughs> That's really all you need to remember. All that, of course, and putting a chain one spacer in between each motif. So I'm just working my fan, which is treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble, into the same stitch, so that same top stitch of that little bobble that we worked. And it looks like that. So there's the first fan that's worked in the very edge stitch, followed by a bobble in that chain two space followed by a fan, worked in the top of that bobble, and now we're going to work a bobble, so we completed a fan, next is bobble, and you have to work it into a chain two space. So you find the next chain two space, which is this one, and, uh, oops, did I, I didn't chain one, I got a chain one, and then I work a bobble into that chain two space. So I start a treble, work the first two stitches, work the second two stitches, and start my second treble. Work the first two stitches, work the second two stitches. That leaves me with three loops on my hook. Wrap, and pull back through all three that are left. And there's that bobble, clearly defining now that chain two space. Chain one, and we're at the end of the row. So because we always begin with a fan, and because we always end with a fan, your last motif, which is a fan, will always go in the top of that chain five that began the previous row. So the easiest thing to do is sort of look at your last two things, find the top of that last stitch and then the chain right next to it, and that is where you work your last motif. So this is a treble fan motif, which is treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble. And you work that whole thing into that last chain, that edge stitch from the previous row. Treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble. And that completes your third row. And it looks something like this. From here on out, the pattern is row three repeating over and over and over again. And like I said, because you have to start with a fan motif at the beginning 
and then finish with a fan motif at the end, you automatically get a triangular pattern happening. But I'm going to walk you through row four, which is also the repeating of row three, just so that you get it comfortable in your head, and then I'm going to leave you on your own. <laughs> All right, to begin every row, we chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Flip our work so that we are working back across the top of the last row we just did. You begin every row with a fan, so you identify that first stitch. Your chain five counts as a treble, so you work another treble, chain two, and two more trebles into that same stitch, and that creates your first fan motif. And that is how you begin and end every single row. In between every motif, you need a chain one spacer. After every fan comes a little bobble. And bobbles are all worked into the chain two spaces of the previous row. So the chain two space is the middle of a fan. And every row you're going to get more and more and more of them. So you identify the next chain two space and you do that little treble bobble, which is you start with a treble, work the first two sets of stitches, start another treble into that same spot, work the first two sets of stitches for that one, and when you're left with three loops on your hook, wrap and pull back through all three loops. That's a motif. So you chain one, and after every bobble motif comes another fan motif. Fans are worked into the tops of bobbles from the previous row. So try not to confuse a sort of a half a fan with a bobble. I know it looks a little funny, but try to make sure that you always identify the top of that stitch. And you grab the part that you think looks like the very middle and there it is right there. It's not always easy to see. <laughs> Aha. There we go. And work fans into the top of every single bobble. The idea is that you want sort of a, um, well, an, a, a balanced look for your pattern. So if sometimes you've got a make one fan sort of just to the one side or the other of a bobble, go ahead and do that. You want your pattern to look balanced because that's what's going to make your overall shawl look nice and balanced. But this is a pretty forgiving pattern, so don't worry if you're at a little bit before or a little bit after. When you finish a motif, make sure you chain one. Motif is not finished unless you've chained one. Finished a fan, so the next is a bobble. Bobbles go into chain two spaces. There's the next chain two space. So you work the first two sets of a treble, start another one. Work the second two sets <laughs> of that treble. And once you've got three loops left, wrap and go through everything. Ba -bum! That's a motif. So you chain one. Next comes a fan. And fans go into the tops of bobbles. And there's the bobble from the previous row. See it sitting there in that, that chain two space. Identify the top of it and work another fan, which is treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble. Oops. <laughs> Need another treble first. There we go. So two trebles, chain two, and two more trebles, all into that same space or same stitch top of a bobble. There we go. You never finish a motif without chaining one. Next comes a bobble. So here's that last fan from the previous row. So I'm going to work a bobble into that chain two space, which is sort of like doing two trebles together. There we go. Chain one, because I finished the motif, and you always end a row with a fan. You begin with a fan, 
and you end with a fan. And that fan goes into that last possible stitch. So it's the top of that chain five from the previous row. So stick your hook in there. Don't worry, as you put in more stuff, it'll get bigger and bigger and make it easier and easier to work into. And a fan is treble, treble, chain two, treble, treble. And that is essentially all you need to know in order to make this pattern. You can work this shawl as long as you like. Um, I made mine in 27 rows. So my shawl is 27 rows tall. And in order to make the border, which I'm going to show you next, it's best to have an odd number of rows. So you want uh, an odd number of rows. If you're going to stripe it, you can stripe it at any point. Um, I did, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I did my first stripe in eleven rows. I did my next stripe in an odd set. And my last stripe is only, I think, five rows. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, six rows. So my last stripe is only six rows. Um, you can do whatever you like. You can make it solid. You can make your rows, your stripes, say five or six rows tall. You can make them odd numbers like I did. But just make sure that all together you have an odd number of rows. I did 27. So 27 rows tall is my shawl. Make sure it's odd because the border works best on an odd number of rows. So while you are sort of working on your shawl, I'm going to continue my walk in the woods and I'll see you in a moment to show you how to put on the border. <laughs> Once you've made your shawl as long as you want, and I'm just sort of doing a, um, a little version of this. I'm going to turn this into a kerchief. I think that might be kind of cute. <laughs> Once you've finished it, so you've got it as long as you want, and it's an odd number of rows, just fasten off your yarn. And uh, if you're going to do the same border color, so if you're using the same yarn for your border, you don't have to fasten off. But if you really want that border to stand out, then I recommend doing it in a different color. Um, that way it'll, it'll really show, but you don't have to. So if you're not changing colors, you're not changing yarn, you don't have to fasten off. But if you are, snip your yarn, pull that tail back through the loop on your hook, and you can weave that tail in now or later, it doesn't matter. So this is, I'm just gonna move this bit out of the way. This is what you should be looking at. It's uh, your finished shawl, probably somewhat larger than this, and you've got an odd number of rows. You count them by the first row is the bottom point. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven. So any odd number is good. It's going to probably bend a little bit. You're likely going to find that the top has got really, really long on you, but that's okay because we haven't blocked it yet. And you're going to want to steam block this at the end. Um, and I'll show you very briefly how you can do that. Um, but once you've got your shawl finished, we're going to put the border on. So I like to start in the far left corner. So I just sort of turn my work around. So I look at, I'm looking at, this is sort of the, the first edge we're gonna work down. Start with a slip knot. So I'm gonna use this nice sort of auburn color here. So you put a slip knot on your hook, pick up your shawl by the left corner, so pretty much where you fastened off if you're changing colors. And in that same last stitch you made, just plunk your hook through there, and you want to join with a single crochet. So get your little tails out of the way. And I like to pick up a loop so that my slip knot and my picked up loop count as my two loops. I wrap and I go through both. So you've anchored your new yarn in the corner, the top left corner stitch with a single crochet. And now, this is the cool part. You're going to skip the length of every single one of your stitches. So what you're looking at is either a real treble crochet or a chain five length. A real treble crochet or a chain five length. It's the sides, the long sides, you skip those. You look for 
the bottom, so the worked part, the worked stitch of each row, you look for these little neat spaces in between the long sides. So for example, this will be my first size. I'm going to treble crochet into that stitch. So the bottom of the length before the second one, it's this one right here. And I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to treble crochet right into that stitch. Come back through two, come back through two, come back through two. I'm going to chain one and treble crochet into that same stitch again. So I pick up a loop, wrap, back through two, wrap, back through two, wrap, back through two. Chain one. I'm still working this one space, so I'm going to treble into it again. Back through two, back through two, back through two. Chain one. Still work in that space. Put through my hook. Wrap through two, wrap through two, wrap through two. <laughs> chain one. And we're going to work one more treble crochet into that same stitch. Pull up a loop. Wrap through two, wrap through two, wrap through two. Okay. What you're doing is making a very open fan and it's going to lay across the long parts of the stitches down the side of your shawl. So what's the next thing you're going to do? Well, in order to make that, sh that sort of fan lie flat, you're going to identify the next stitch. So here it is. Some of them are going to be small, some of them are going to be big, but that's the next one. And you're just going to single crochet into it. One single crochet. Ooh, I love this. Identify the next one. So skip that long stitch. You're still working down the side. So this is, if we look at it the proper way, there's the top, here are the two sides, and you're working down the side of your shawl. And what you're doing is you're working stitches at every interval between the lengths of the sides of the stitches. So the actual chains or the top of the stitches that got worked when you were working the edges those are the same places that you're putting in your stitches. So you identify the next one, and that's this one for me. And we're going to repeat this big lacy open fan. So we're going to treble crochet into that stitch. Chain one. Treble crochet into that same stitch. Chain one. Treble crochet into that same stitch. Chain one. Treble crochet into that stitch. Chain one. And treble crochet. So what each lacy fan consists of is five treble crochets and four chain one spacers in between. So you treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, and then skip down the side to the next, oh, there it is, the next stitch, so the next worked stitch, skip that long side, find the next stitch and single crochet. And the act of single crocheting between each of your big lacy treble fans is what keeps your fans doing that little boop, sort of the open fan look kind of anchors it all the way down the side of your, oh my gosh, that is so pretty, all the way down the side of your shawl. <laughs> and that is why you need an odd number of rows in your shawl, because each fan needs a, an anchor, a place to put the stitches, and an anchor. So we're going to continue working down the side of our shawl. We've just single crocheted, so we skip down to the next open little stitch there, and we repeat that treble open fan stitch, or the open fan. So you create a treble, chain one, treble, this is all worked into the same stitch, chain one, treble, got my little ball rolling around here, chain one, 
What am I at? Treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one. Need one more treble, chain one. <laughs> and one final treble. So five trebles and four chain ones. That is the open fan. Skip down, find the next open space or that little stitch, and single crochet. Dee -dee. So you're going to continue that lovely open treble fan stitch all the way down the side of your shawl. You work all of those trebles and sort of chain ones into one place. Remember to single crochet in between each one. Skip the long sides of your trebles from your actual shawl and only work your stitches into those bases. So the base of where you put a fan and the base of where you put a fan and the base of where you put a fan. That's where they go. Once you get all the way down to the bottom, this is that really pretty part that I put at the bottom. So <laughs> I, just, I just love this little design. So what I did is I doubled up the open lace fan and that looks something like this. Get to the bottom of your shawl. Pull on that first stitch. So that's the first chain you worked everything into and this is the space that you're going to work your huge double fan into. So make sure you single crochet in the sort of the space right before. Skip that last that last side of a, of a treble. Make sure you're working that first ever chain that you worked your entire shawl began right here. So make sure you've got that one open and start treble chain oneing. <laughs> what you're going to do is work 10 trebles and 9 chain one spaces into that first sort of open chain. So 10 trebles separated by those 9 chain one spacers. So you're essentially doubling up a regular open fan. Alright, once you've worked, oh that is so pretty, once you've worked your tenth treble, don't chain one afterwards, and you're just going to continue the same pattern we did down the first side, up the next side. So you've worked that double open fan into the bottom point, skip up, skip that stitch, skip up to the base of each fan, so remember it's the base that, of each worked fan all the way up the side, Pick the next one and single crochet into it. That anchors your fan. And then skip up to the next one and work a regular open fan. So that's five trebles separated by chain one spaces. So treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble, chain one, treble. <laughs> and that is what you do working up the other side. So it's just like the first side, but that's what you do working up the second side. So you're repeating the same open fan pattern. There we go, one, two, three, four, five. Up the other side of your shawl. Make sure each fan is separated by a single chain or a single single crochet. And just keep on going all the way up to the last corner. And when you get there, I'll show you what to do. Alright, once you've finished your last open fan and you've come up to the far right corner, so it looks something like this. There's the far left corner where you started. There's the bottom where you put in that really pretty double fan. And now we're back up to the far right corner. Obviously you need to anchor your fan. So you're going to pick the top of that chain 5, so the very top chain of that chain 5, and you're going to single crochet into it. Make sure you actually get <laughs> make sure you actually get this ditch. There we go. And because we're changing a little corner, because this is sort of awkward, we don't want to put another great big thing down here. I like that for the bottom. We're just going to put in a little tiny wee corner. So we're going to chain two, and we're going to single crochet back into that same chain, that same edge chain. Just like that. And that neatly makes us round a corner. It also gives us a sort of single crochet to start. And now we're going to work the same kind of open fan stitch pattern across the top of our shawl, but with a small difference. The first part of our open 
um, sort of fan is going to be a little bit crammed. We're going to actually work it right into the top of this first chain two space. So you're going to work that open fan into the top of the chain two space. And this is going to work out just fine. One more. And then you're going to work the sort of the uh, the anchor into the top of your bobble stitch. So you pick the top of your bobble stitch, single crochet into it, and then the next fan gets worked into the next chain two space. So then it's going to stretch itself out and it will eventually be just fine across the top. It's going to look a little sort of awkward at first but we haven't blocked it. So that's something to keep in mind when you're making larger crocheted uh, projects. I have a lot of people actually ask me about that. Sometimes they think that their work is warping or bending or it looks a little awkward. Don't worry, whenever you get stuff um, finished it's always a good idea to block it and uh, that just sort of helps everything lie down exactly where it's supposed to be. So you see how that looks kind of awkward but not really because you you want the edge to kind of be a little bit stretched because you want that corner to sort of stand out and this does give us a little slack on that corner. So you pick out your next bobble and you single crochet oops, into the top of that bobble. There we go. Right on top, right to the side, whatever. Nice single crochet. Pick the chain two space that comes next and work a fan into it. Big open fan. So that's treble, chain one, second treble, chain one, third treble, chain one, fourth treble, <laughs> chain one, and last treble. And I bet you have found, as you got going with this pattern, that your trebles and your chains all kind of lead into each other. That's the beauty of working on a big repeating pattern is that it gets quite comfortable in your hands after a while. We get a single crochet into the top of the next bobble and work an open fan into the next chain two space. You're going to continue this across the top of your nice big shawl and when you get to the far left corner we're going to fasten off and I'll show you what to do when we get there. Alright, once you've worked your last open fan in that last chain two space, you should be back at that first corner that you, um, you attached your new yarn with a single crochet. You're going to single crochet into that same stitch, so the same stitch that you added your yarn to, you're going to work a single crochet, and then you're going to make that little corner. So just chain two, and then into that first single crochet you made, you're going to slip stitch. So just stick your hook through that top of that first single crochet, grab the yarn, and pull it back through everything on your hook. And that completes your shawl. So now you have a lovely little shawl with a really pretty little border. And you've got this, this double open fan at the bottom. I just love that lovely rounding sort of almost like the the end of a dragon tail might be. I just love that. And you can make this shawl as big or as small as you want. Make sure that you have an odd number of rows all the way up because that's what makes your big open lacy fan sort of border stitch work best. And then just work that stitch across the top. Make it nice and even. Work your last little corner and when you're all done you can chop off your yarn. <laughs> Fasten off and weave in all your ends. And you can weave in your ends with your um, your little yarn needle or even a smaller hook if you have it. But you want to make sure that they are nice and hidden because that's what finishes off something wearable uh, really, really nicely. Now, blocking. Let me give you a couple of, of tips on blocking. There are 
proper ways to block, and then there's the quick, easy, <laughs> sort of Jada version of blocking. When I block an article of clothing, or a granny blanket, or just about anything that I'm doing, I lay it out on my, my um, ironing board, and in fact I'll show you even what that looks like. So here we are on the ironing board. I like to lay out whatever it is I'm working on on the ironing board, and if it's a really big piece, obviously you've got to do pieces of it. Take your iron and fill your iron with water. So you want to make sure that you've got water in your water, your reservoir, because what you're going to do is you're going to steam. You're going to take your iron and turn it on to the highest steam setting. You want to be able to generate steam. Make sure that however you get steam, so if you have a little button has to be up for steam that it's on. Sit it down so it's not touching your work and let it heat up until steam's coming out of it. When you're ready to block, and this is something you want to make sure you're comfortable using a steam iron. So if you don't usually use a steam iron, get help from somebody who, who is comfortable using a steam iron because nobody wants to get burned here. <laughs> and you can do one of two things. You can take a tea towel and lay the tea towel over top of your article if you're really worried about it. Or if you're a little more practiced and comfortable, you take your iron and you only hover over top of it. So I would leave about uh, an inch of space between your iron and your work and you only hover over top of it. Do not touch your iron to your work. Never ever ever do that because you could melt the fibers if you're using an acrylic because acrylic is plastic. You could damage your yarn if it's wool or um, if you're using a because you're using such a high heat setting you don't want to put it on your work. So just hover over top and the steam will come out and the steam will get into the fibers of your work and as you Sort of as it gets steamed up, you can just lightly touch it, pull it. Um, the other thing you can do, <laughs> and the proper way to do it, is if you're using something, um, if you're steaming something that's a bit smaller, you can put down a mat and use straight pins and straight pin your work to it into the right shape and then steam it. But because you're doing something like a shawl, which is large, I find it just easier to gently steam over top of the work let it cool, sort of stretch it into space, and sort of flatten it with your hand and keep going. And then the, gradually the weight and the steam and the moisture will pull your entire shawl into the right shape. And that is a quick tip on blocking. <laughs> And that's the magic of fall. <laughs> anyway, that is how you make a triangular shawl, everybody, using the not-so-troublesome treble crochet stitch. I hope you enjoyed making this as much as I did, and I hope you enjoy being cozy throughout the cool fall days ahead. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys can post me pictures if you make yourself a treble shawl. <laughs> you can follow me on Google+, Plus and Pinterest and Instagram and also at Etsy and I'm at Jada and Stitches at all four locations. I also love it when you guys post comments and little suggestions down below in the comment boxes. I read everything and I just love it when you guys pop in and say hello. That really warms my heart. <laughs> Almost as much as this shawl. <laughs> oh gosh, I hope you guys have a wonderful week. We will see you again really really soon on the Jada and Stitches show. And now if you'll excuse me, I'm going to continue with my walk. <laughs> Bye everybody!